Diana Hernandez, communication system for the city of Enid, and this is another city, city update. With me is Assistant City Manager Scott Morris. Thank you, Scott, for being on. Good afternoon. It's a cold, cold day out there. I think it took a few of us by surprise today. Man, <laughs> let me tell you, my car was frozen. Um, but did you get to work okay? Yes, and I, I did send my uh, senior in high school on to school today. They had school, so I said, you need to go. That's so right. he, he huh. went on to school today. <laughs> On you go. All right, let's jump into um, what is happening today. Today, because of the weather, the recycling center uh, drop-off point had to be closed. Now, do you have any updates on when it will reopen? I would suspect that tomorrow they, they may be closed as well. Mm -hmm. So if you can just save up what you've got to recycle, you know, maybe Wednesday they'll be open again, but if the weather's just so cold, there are unsafe conditions, and uh, with the, the staff that's working outside, there's just not a very good way to keep them inside and warm um, that clientele. Uh, it's just better for them during these really nasty, icy and, and cold events just to uh, call it a day. Um, we, can, right. we can drop our recycling off on, an, on a nicer day for them. Right. Now for roads that are, um, can be really wet and kind of slick um, the c-click fix app is a really dandy tool um, we all try to do our part to try to keep the streets safe um, when it comes to drainage overflow of water so what are things that individuals who are maybe not aware of the c-click fix app can use it for especially like weather like this sure now I would not use C-Click Fix if your road is just uh, wet or something like that. If you've got an intersection that's just especially really bad, then maybe you could use it. But really it's designed for if you've got potholes, if you've, if you've got a, a missing sign or a sign maybe that's faded, it needs to be replaced. Um, it can also be used for nuisances if, you've, if there are people that have got a, a problem um, with with high grass or something that's causing you an issue at your house you can do you can report things like that on C click fix and uh, we'll take a look at them and get them going now I have a friend that um, just you know people won wonder does C click fix work and uh, we, we've been talking a lot about roads and which roads are important to to fix and at our last study session um, Mr. Gilbert um, and Jason Unruh talked about a five-year plan for different roads that need mm -hmm. to be fixed and we have a point repair program where we do intersections and different um, different sections of concrete pavement that we contract out mm -hmm. and I have a friend who's put in a lot of C-Click Fix apps at a couple of different intersections close to his house and I noticed that one of them is on the point repair program for this year and the other intersection is on next year's um, okay. program and they are really rough little sections of road and so you know 
that the Public Works Department does take C-Click Fix in, into account and whenever they go inspect those roads they you know put that up against other problems they have and they might determine hey the community's helped us move something up on the right. priority that maybe we didn't weren't aware of and so C-Click Fix is important. Generally if you put a pothole request on there if it's a warm enough day to, to actually use asphalt they'll get out there and and get it done within within a few days so I encourage you guys to use C-Click Fix um, whenever you see a problem that needs some attention. Thank you. Now moving on to quality of life um, um, I guess events uh, per se. Now we are going to have Christmas in the park this year but it's going to be a little bit different than past years so what are the changes that we are going to expect this year? Well I did see a video that Mrs. Claus mm -hmm. and Santa are going to be there um, but they don't they they want to take some extra precautions against covid and, and and help our community stay safe as well and so i believe there'll be a, a drive through christmas at the park there are going to be christmas lights out on both sides of the park this year uh, the regular characters that people are used to seeing like uh like rudolph and the grinch they're going to be there as well and it, it should be a wonderful um wonderful event with beautiful lights in the community so we're still doing Christmas in the park. Um, the ice rink is still on for, for November 20th, so that's going to happen. Uh, that's still in, in effect. That'll be a great thing for our community as well. So some great things coming up. And, of course, the soonest one is Halloween. So like we talked about last time, you know, go have fun trick-or-treating. We've put some videos out and some suggestions for how people can um, have a safe Halloween this year. And so... You know, there are, there are a lot of different events that, you know, it's not outside of the norm for churches and other things to have a trunk or treat or some kind of thing like that. So there are a lot of activities for Halloween coming up, okay. too. Awesome. And so this is actually something brand new, something that we just got in that the uh, Meadow Lake Golf Course will be closed today um, at 3 p.m., starting at 3 p.m. today. So it's maybe due to the weather, just like the recycling center. This just in, folks. The Metal Lake Golf closed at 3 p.m. today, probably tomorrow as well. Uh, so be, be looking for that online if you, if you plan on golfing. Hopefully you looked outside and you went, hey, this might not be a good idea to chase a little white ball around in the, in the white snow. But. Right. <laughs> and they will be closed as well tomorrow, Tuesday. So hopefully they'll be up and running Wednesday for all the golf lovers. All right, and now economic development. Now the Enid Skate Park, the contractor there, um, had unearthed a lot of rubble, a lot of chunks of concrete. Is that going to push back the finish date? You know, we haven't we haven't heard any any pushback as far mm -hmm. as the date. Which mm -hmm. December fourth is the date they gave us for completion of the skate park. Mm -hmm. I did see some pictures where they did unearth. I mean, I'm not talking like little rocks, little chunks. I'm big foundation pieces of concrete that are you know eight feet by six feet giant pieces of concrete so that that just um that was probably a, a little outside of the scope of what they were thinking when they started right. digging down mm -hmm. uh, but i think everything's still on track so far but you know there there are events especially when you look outside like the weather that we're having now you know contractors aren't aren't uh i think they factor in a few weather days but when we have days like today there are some construction that can be done and others just can't be done on a day like today. So there, there could be a few weather days, but we haven't heard any pushback on the date so far. Awesome. Thank you. Now for updates here at the City of Enid, HR is currently recruiting for firefighter position um, and property inspector, water production maintenance and production technician and police officer. So. Um, feel free to go to our website and look under um, the opportunities that we have here at the City of Enid and we would be glad to have you on board. Yeah, get your applications in. We talked about it, uh, fire department applications a little bit last time we were on there, right. but you know, I, I didn't want to remind everybody we did increase the starting pay for police officers mm -hmm. and so it's a great time to join the Enid Police Department. That's right, they're doing great things, so I'm really excited. Now, speaking of, uh, well, police uh, department, I remembered that 
at the last commission meeting, there was an approval to get new vehicles. Can you touch a little bit about That's that? That's right. So not only is there a job open for police officers, but there are going to be 10 to 12 new, I forget if it's 10 or 12, but they're getting some more police cruisers mm -hmm. uh, purchased. And I had a question to me that I'll go ahead and answer now, but a, a question was asked, you know, why, why is the police department buying new vehicles whenever there are roads that need to be repaired? You know, and I just wanted to answer that question by saying the Enum Police Department has a budget and they have tax appropriations that are different from the rest of the city of Enid. And so whenever we have sales tax, there's a portion of that that goes for emergency um, police and fire. And, and uh, the, the police chief has his own budget and he can spend money on police cars that uh, that tax money that they get is not is not meant for for roads and so he's got his own budget and he spends it and the, he both the both the police and the fire chief are usually very conservative with their budgets because they have the long game in mind they're always thinking about the next big thing that they want to do right. for the police department right. um, we're gonna have a story sometime in the future about a new training center that they want to build um, it's always a good time for training in the in police and fire and um, no different time now than any so a training center will be uh, put up in the future and for the fire department you know they've always got big purchases that they're thinking ahead on uh, whether it be a big fire truck people may not realize some of the fire trucks that we buy are five six hundred thousand dollar pieces of equipment and so uh, they, they try to be conservative with their budgets to save up for big purchases Awesome, thank you for that. Yeah. Now, I want to focus on a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes here at the City of Enid, one of um, our awesome departments that I want to focus on, and which was on last week's weekly report, was on the stormwater and roadway maintenance. As you can see here, um, these are crews assisting Main Street Enid. If you know that there was uh, Main Street had collaborated with the city of Enid to um, create this crosswalk mural um, inspired by uh, Jack Morgan, local um, muralist artist. And so if you want to go down a little bit more, we will see the crews um, it hasn't even hit Halloween yet, but the crews have already begun hanging Christmas lights at Meadow Lake Park. So it, they, they are getting ready for that. They are looking forward to that. And um, despite um, the you know social distancing and having to work around that, um, they're, they're going full throttle to you make know, it. Last week, one of the pictures we brought up on mm -hmm. that was them adding electricity to the other side of the park so that they right. could do that. So uh, getting more power to the whole park is always a good idea, especially when you want to have a good Christmas, have some lights everywhere. Absolutely. All right, now next is going to be technical services, and this is one of the many jobs that they do is sign replacements. So um, back to the C-Click fix. If there is something wrong with the signs, if you can't read it, or if you see there's ones missing, make sure to C-Click fix it, and it will go to um, this department technical services, and they'll be uh, on top of that to replace that. And they'll also give you an update when it is done. And let's scroll down a little bit more. And the next department that we have here is fleet management, crews replacing a belt on a trash truck when the city's fleeing. So even though we get um, all this equipment, a lot of the repairs are done in-house. Am I correct? So these are some very skilled. Oh yeah, and that, um, that trash truck there that you just saw, that's a almost a $300,000 truck that's probably a 2018 model. Uh, Mm -hmm. Maybe it might even be a 2019 model, but just there's little maintenance and little things that happen and we have to be prepared to get them fixed because that truck right there, everybody wants that truck to be on the road picking up their trash. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's go a little bit down and we will see right now solid waste services. Now they have a lot. Um, always going on, um, roll-offs, 23 pickups, compactors, 20 pickups, debris piles, 15 pickups, polycarts delivered, repaired, 56 delivered, and five repaired solid waste training. Right now, a new driver on the side load trash truck. And so this is just a little glimpse of what they do every day for the residents of Enid. That's a little, what they do is at the service center, they set mm -hmm. up a little, 
a little course back behind close to the public where they can put poly carts at and dumpsters and when we have a new driver that's coming in they can have they can set up kind of real world experiences and get them out there driving a big truck for the first time right. and let them ha kind of have some room to figure things out and you know they they put them through a pretty good thing over there they'll make them back up and and go between certain cones and tight areas just to make the driver feel comfortable he can handle that big piece of equipment out on tight residential streets where there's not only cars parked on the side of the road but mailboxes and all kinds of other obstacles to kind of deal with so it's a good scenario that they have for training yes absolutely that crash course is actually really um, good to know I didn't know about that now let's go further down we'll see water production now water production the rumpage of uh, rampage for the week was 79 million nine hundred forty two and two hundred and sixty uh, gallons for last week water production installing frost free faucets on South Weeder Ridge Road and now for uh, everyone I know that a couple of people that have heard had their pipes frozen and so it's it's that time of the season where we have mm. to like think about uh, defrosting and kind of securing our our pipes um, but now that we're on the subject on water is there any updates on call lake uh, you will hear a big update on okay. call lake on november the 17th so okay. that is the date that our uh, um, our construction manager at risk has to give us a guaranteed maximum price for the call lake project so we'll hear all about, we should have a number of what that guaranteed maximum price is on November 17th. So that'll be very exciting. I really don't have an update for today, but uh, that will be coming up just two meetings from now. Awesome. So now jumping into what is uh, upcoming in the study session and the commission meeting and what do you have to share with us? Sure. Um, we've got a couple of things on the study session. We'll hear an update on city finances and CARES funding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's just going to be kind of where are we in the budget process, the, the, the utilities and taxes that have come in, mm -hmm. where are we on the year on that, right. um, just uh, to make sure that we're comfortable with how much money we're spending, how much is, is coming in. And then we're also going to get a talk about it, re revising a, a PUD ordinance and um, this is a planned unit development ordinance that we have and if you want to do a special project for instance if you wanted to um, put in a 10 or 12 tiny houses on one property the best way to go about doing that is to go through this a PUD and so we're going to make a few changes so that it's a little easier for projects to be run through uh, that process and that will be talked about during the study session um, so that's what we've got for the study session this time. Now, what is uh, on the agenda for the commission meeting or if there's anything yet on the agenda? Well, there are a lot of consent items on the, okay. uh, on the study session or on the regular meeting. But uh, before that, there is, a, there is a hearing and an ordinance for a, a rezoning, um, 317 East Cornell. Uh, there is a, a request to move that property from R3 to C3. And so we'll, we'll hear about that. If there's anyone that has that wants to talk about that at the hearing, they'll have a chance to sign up and do that. Um, it looks to me like the guy already owns pretty well the whole block um, on that street, and he part of it is already zoned commercial. And so he right. just wants the rest of his property to match what, it are, what the other section already is. So that'll be under... Uh, uh, hearings and then uh, community development 6.1 that's the ordinance for it then we probably will have an administration item in there that isn't there yet before we get to consent and talk about elections and so right. coming up um, in February and and April will be there are going to be some vacancies for ward um, commissioners and so the, there will be a deadline if you're interested in that uh, at, at December 5th um, by 5 p.m., or excuse me, December 9th by 5 p.m. If you're interested in running for one of those wards that will be open, then you can file your intent to run for that, and there'll be an election. So um, this ad agenda item is just something that it, it goes on there every two years. Anytime that we have 
an open election like that, there's, mm -hmm. there's an item on there that basically says, here's the election, here's what's open, and here's when it's going to be, here are the deadlines for it. And so you'll probably see that on the agenda uh, pop up as well. There's a lot of consent items, a few for property easement things, ex acceptance of a few projects. Um, right now, that's about all there is. There's a, there are a few, you know, the claims that are paid on a, on some different uh, trusts and things like that. But that's that's what we have for the agenda. It will be at the council chambers because of this hearing, so it will not be at Stride Bank Center. Okay. So if you are wanting to come to the commission meeting on November third, it will be at the council chambers. All right. Okay, thank you for that update about the study session and upcoming commission meeting. Now, we are going to touch on the numbers for uh, COVID-19 for Garfield County and also for Enid. Total confirmed cases for COVID-19 Garfield County, 2,415. Uh, deaths related to COVID-19 in Garfield County, 27. Recovered COVID-19 in Garfield County, 2,034. Active cases of COVID-19 in Garfield County, 381. Now, total confirmed cases of COVID-19 for Enid is 2,211. Deaths related to COVID-19 in Enid is 27. Recovered from COVID-19 in Enid is 1,873. And active cases in Enid um, of COVID-19 is 311. Do you want to share any closing thoughts before we close out? Well, sure. Uh, you know, every Monday at three o'clock, we get to talk to the hospital administrators mm -hmm. for Integris and for St. Mary's mm -hmm. and Garfield County mm -hmm. um, Health Department. Um, what they're telling us is that they're getting a high number of transfers in to our Enid hospitals okay. from Oklahoma City, Tulsa, you know, other areas like that. And so there is there is not as much room in the hospitals as they would like. The staffing that they have at the hospitals is right. is pretty well maxed out, and um, even though our community might seem to be at a plateau, the, the COVID, what COVID is doing across the state is still impacting a lot of people. Uh, we're getting people into our hospitals that are make that's making our capacity a little less, a little more diminished. And so I would just, you know, say to everyone, continue to be vigilant, continue to try to protect yourself. Nobody knows what the winter months are going to bring. Most experts think that it may get a little worse during the winter. And so I'm just urging everyone to try to try to keep vigilant, try to be as proactive as you can about where you go and the things that you do. Uh, but I understand. Um, we in Oklahoma, we want to we want to live, we want to do our thing, and I I understand that too. So, okay, thank you, Scott, for yeah. sharing those comments. Um, now there is another update that just end that there is a birthday um, of our city of Enid um, manager. It's the boss's birthday today. The commander in chief's birthday. So. Um, <laughs> Um, to Gerald Gilbert, we want to wish a happy birthday and we put something together for you and we hope that you enjoy it. And to the city, the residents of Enid, thank you for watching. Join us uh, same time next week, Monday at 1.30 for another city update. Make sure to send us any questions or concerns that you may have. And if we uh, don't have the answers, we will find them and we will get back in touch with you. Thank you. and to and until next time, have a safe week. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, I'm doing a short clip. Your city manager, Gerald Gilbert. I wanted to talk about books. So we just talked about some of those in Washington, D.C. with our, our federal delegation. You know, the E is my favorite part because it stands for Enid and Excellence. One, two, three. My coffee group. They really have no problem telling me when, I, when I've done something wrong or when, I, or when they like something. Again. Merry Christmas! Uh, it's, it's a professional team. Everybody gets paid. Um, a lot of the players will uh, have come from European leagues. Yeah, this is a, a fantastic project. Another example of great work by city employees. You want to say something else? Merry Christmas and happy holidays. See you next year. I have been contemplating as your city manager what I should ask Santa Claus for Christmas. We will, we will rock you.
Please not be done. If I could just get, well, probably a couple hundred million dollars from Santa Claus.